All right, so before I bring up the next group, I do need some help. If you have a seat next to you, please raise your hand. We have quite a few people in the back that need seats. So if you have a seat next to you, there are two up here. Please don't take mine. There are some seats over here, three. Anybody still want to see if there's some more of front? Front and center. Of these costly issues and improve the urban resilience of Cairo. 
In this presentation, we will focus on the environmental services of green and blue spaces due to the substantial and unique opportunity costs they provide in a business as usual scenario. Our solutions focus on green interventions as a mitigation tool for localized air pollution, noise pollution, and urban heat island effect. At an emissions source, the concentration of pollutants is the highest. The pollutants mix with cleaner air and disperse into smaller concentrations. Green space enhances this dispersion through its mass and its volume to reduce human exposures to immediate and highly concentrated air pollution. As seen in the United Kingdom, the county of Surrey has formed a green corridor comprised of tree canopies, hedges, and facade green. This corridor captures particulate matter and other traffic-related pollutants to reduce human exposure and increase adaptation to climate change. The types of green interventions most effective for air pollution is a complicated topic, and we wanted to break down for our client what the optimal interventions are and their potential for impact on a site-specific street level for Zamalek. According to the literature that we reviewed, air pollution mitigation is most effective in areas with high human exposure, so say a large populace in close proximity to traffic, and in areas with the least amount of airflow or ventilation. Zamalek Association provided us with streets that they've identified as active zones of commercial development. We took those streets and identified which interventions would maximize reduction of pollutant concentrations based on the urban morphology of the streets. This led our team to develop four green intervention recommendations, modeled on data inputs from Google Earth and Transport for Cairo. I would like to provide you all with an example. On the bottom left quadrant, you will see green intervention recommendation one and the 26th of July. The 26th of July corridor is a wide, heavily trafficked street with tall commercial and residential buildings of a similar height for, known to form, sorry, form, forming what is known as a street canyon. In this scenario, the best intervention is hedgerows or linear barriers where vegetation is um, continuous from the bottom to the top. Low-line hedges should be placed as close to the approximate source of emissions as possible to reduce immediate exposures to humans. In this scenario, tree canopies could actually have an adverse effect on air pollution exposures by trapping emissions and accumulating pollutants in the low-line atmosphere. To switch to our second component of this project, this map shows the current state of blue space in Zamalek. The blue and yellow zones are areas with some form of access to the river, while the red zones show an inability to access or view the Nile. An effective management strategy to maximize benefits of blue space is to increase visibility and accessibility, which is associated with numerous health and environmental benefits. With this information, we are offering our client best practices to create value for their underutilized blue spaces. Cairo suffers from high levels of metals and toxins in their waterways from contaminated runoff. To address water quality improvement, New York City's Hunters Point South Park has used native vegetation that provides natural removal of toxins from soils and water. The, the native vegetation also requires less maintenance and less irrigation, reducing the operational cost for the park. Ecosystem services of blue space are more valuable when designed sustainably, even if access is intermittent. Zamalek's private waterfront properties inhibit continuous walkways and footpaths for the public on the perimeter of the island. Currently on the northern part of the island, there is a walkway under construction that is damaging river ecology due to unsustainable development. In Chengdu, China, they have created public stairs at multiple access points to the Funan River. And this has allowed for an increased interaction with the river in an urban context. In sum, I would like to provide our recommended actions for Zamalek Association. 
First, through the Green Intervention Tool, we are identifying vegetation characteristics and design strategies that can increase the value of green space on the island. We are also providing case studies on tactical sound strategies to mitigate noise pollution and urban heat island mitigation tactics for at-risk areas. Secondly, we are providing our client with informational guidance on the Blue Health Environmental Assessment Tool, which will allow them to holistically and comprehensively identify opportunities for value for their green spaces. This tool is measured through a community survey that will be initiated by the Zamalek Association and is suited for their work that is embedded in a grassroots approach. Finally, we are providing information on how to better monitor for air pollution, noise pollution, and urban heat island effect. This information will equip our client with stronger future advocacy and can also be used as a replication model to deploy citizen science across Cairo to protect green and blue spaces. With this information, Zamalek Association can speak to the substantial economic benefit and value of the natural environment. Thank you very much. Hi, thank you so much. Um, did your green space recommendations also consider downtown Cairo, which is like adjacent to the island? Uh, that's a great question, but our study of focus has been on Zamalek Island. Thank you for this uh, presentation. I have a question. You said you know the benefits from these interventions that you're suggesting. Benefits for whom? Is it for the inhabitants of the islands, or could you say that it's actually useful for the city as large? And I think that might be an important distinction. Yes, absolutely. So the, the benefit is primarily for the people closest to the proximity, uh, closest to the source of pollution. Um, ultimately, there are differences in short-term health costs and long-term health costs from air pollution, and green spaces primarily act as an intervention to mitigate against those short-term health costs. So people in closest proximity are going to benefit the most from the green space barriers. I was curious if, it was, if you have any sort of quantifications of how much the individual uh, interventions that you proposed helped in terms of things like air quality. And yeah, I guess in terms of like actual air quality reduction and, and things of that nature, is it possible yeah. to quantify it on a more like unit by unit basis? Um, so it really, it, because it is such a micro-scaled issue, it really depends on the area, and the research typically is done through modeling. Um, there's limited empirical um, evidence. It's mostly done through experimenting and modeling to show the connection between pollutant removals or uh, reduction in concentration with pollutants and green space. Um, quantitative metrics for air pollution are typically done on larger scales, like we saw with the economic valuations.